Hi there, my name's Nick Woodham. Um, I'm here today at Peach Guitars uh, to talk to you about the Stingrays and everything that Ernie Ball are doing with these basses. These are very well put together basses. They really are good down to every detail. One thing that really caught my eye recently is just how awesome the new color schemes are. They look really sleek, they're just, they're just really well done. There's uh, not a blemish in sight. This particular one I'm holding I love because it's got black chrome, black hardware, and even at the control panel here. It just really sort of brings it all together. Um, Stingrays for me are, they have a special place in my heart. Um, I like to call them bandmasters. Whenever I'm in a, a band where there's more than about sort of five or six members, I tend to use the Stingray because it keeps everybody in check. <laughs> but um, in essence, what I think is good about them is that with their treble and bass uh, that you can actually add to the signal, um, it's, it's great for cutting through the mix it's also great for adding color to your sound with the treble aspect and with the bass um, that you can boost so much in regards to actual, you know, response and how hard or soft uh, the notes you play hit. I mean, you know, if you're playing in a big band, it's always good to have a bit more bass than you usually would and equally a bit more treble and uh, these instruments do that. These basses are great in a studio environment as well. Um, I think when you're in that situation and you've got a producer that wants a specific kind of sound, um, you've got all the EQ you need at your fingertips. You don't have to spend time messing about with pedals on the floor. You can get, you know, get there pretty quick with just the flick of a switch and the turn of a knob. Um, I like to use Stingrays in sessions um, that you wouldn't generally think you'd need a Stingray for. Um, I think sometimes they can actually sound really good with, you know, styles like Motown and even Soul. I mean, Bernard Edwards from Chic was uh, uh, proof of that. This is uh, the five string uh, version of the Stingray and uh, it's a really impressive specimen. Um, this, this flake uh, in the sparkle here is absolutely phenomenal and the gold hardware really sets it off, it really makes it pop. What I really like about the five strings that Stingray, uh, Stingrays and Music Man do um, is that the low B uh, really doesn't flab out in the bottom end, it's really tight um, and you get a very, very good tonal response from it. It feels good. So the neck and the way it's shaped is very uh, complementary uh, to accessing the fifth fret and actually playing across the neck. Sometimes I've found on some five strings, the strings are too close together or um, you know, you play the low B and it really sounds like it's distorting too much in the bass. But this is a really well put together instrument and um, I think they've really cracked the code with making a five string that kind of works in contemporary music and even in, you know, um, old school music as well. So one of the things that's cool about this five string um, Stingray is that you've got this little toggle switch here, which means you can toggle between series, series with a filter, and also parallel wiring options. So you can get a really diverse set of tones at your fingertips. Again, you know, if you're in a studio, this thing's gonna really, really help you out and it's gonna get you results quickly. Thank you. 
I've had a lot of fun with this bass and uh, I've spoken a bit about how uh, versatile these instruments are um, and this one really is uh, top of the pile. With the dark ray you've got the option to add in the alpha and the omega circuitry um, which is such a game changer. So the three different selections that we have on the dark ray are clean, alpha which is the distortion and then omega which is the fuzz. So you've got two pedals and a free band EQ and an amazing bass. Kind of makes sense, right? So what I really like about this is that on any of the settings, apart from the clean setting, so if you're on alpha or omega, you've got your gain control to determine how much gain you want to actually put into your signal, but then you've also got a blend control as well, so you could have it completely saturated, or you could actually blend your clean channel or your clean uh, switch in with the actual alpha or the omega channel. So it's a really, really good way of just kind of getting some nice gritty tones in and even trying to get sort of like almost like an overdriven amp sound, which is so handy. I thought I'd show you uh, my Stingray. This is a May 1988 Stingray. Um, and it's basically sort of, it's quite transitional because you've got a four bolt neck. Um, there's still some um, elements of like bird's eyeing on the actual maple there on the neck. It's a two band EQ and it's only a nine volt battery. So obviously the newer Stingrays have 18 volts. There's a lot more power in the EQ there. Um, this bass is great and it has a special place in my heart, but at the same time, these new Stingrays are absolutely killer. They're a lot lighter than this one. The EQs are a lot more um, practical. There's notches on there so you can tell when you're halfway on the treble mark and halfway on the bass mark. There's so many things about the newer instruments that are better than the vintage in my opinion. But some people are gonna like what they like and hate what they hate. And some people might play this and say, Do you know what, I much prefer it, but you know. I've had this bass a while and I can definitely tell you the newer stuff better. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching today. Uh, for more information on any of the bases that I've spoken about today, uh, visit peachguitars.com uh, where you can view a full range of all the different colours, specs and four string or five string options. Uh, have a great rest of your day.